If there's one crop that sums up the sheer joy and plenty of growing your own, it has to be the humble bean. Most beans are very quick growing, and once they get going, you can expect week after week after week of tender tasty pods. In this video, we're going to look at two types of beans. Bush beans like these youngsters here, and climbing pole types like these. So let's get started. Let's start with a brief look at what you can grow. Bush or dwarf beans are very quick growing and may be sown every three or four weeks from spring to give a succession of pickings throughout summer. They're handy for filling in any gaps and perfect for tubs and window boxes. Pole or climbing beans need a little more space and some form of support to help them climb, but on the flip side you'll get many more beans from each plant. They're a great way to add height to the vegetable garden and can make an attractive feature. Beans can be further categorised by their pods. Green beans generally have smooth, slender pods. Depending on where you live, you'll also know them as string beans, snap beans or French beans. Runner beans tend to have slightly coarser pods and continue cropping a few weeks later than string beans. Then there are the beans exclusive to warmer climates, including soya beans, lima beans and the appropriately named yard long beans. Most beans are green in colour, but look out for eye-catching alternatives producing deep red, purple or yellow pods. All beans prefer a sunny spot in well-drained soil that was improved with compost or well-rotted manure the autumn before sowing. A clever technique to boost growth is to create a compost trench. Dig out a trench about a foot or 30 centimetres deep where your beans are to grow. Fill it with kitchen scraps and spent crops, top with leaves, then cap it off with soil. By spring the ground will be beautifully rich and moisture attentive and your beans will thrive in it. Sow beans where they are to grow against their supports or for bush types 4 to 6 inches or 10 to 15 centimetres apart with 18 inches or 45 centimetres left between each row. Use a hoe to mark out rows or dig individual planting holes with a trowel. Drop in two seeds per hole so they fall about an inch or two centimetres apart and are two inches or five centimetres deep. Make the first sowing one week before your last frost date, then continue sowing every three to four weeks until midsummer. Thin each pair of seedlings to leave the strongest. Or sow in a greenhouse or cold frame for the earlier start, up to a month before your last frost date. This will also protect young seedlings from slugs and snails. Use deep module trays or pots so there's enough room for the roots and sow into any general purpose or seed starting mix. You can get away with sowing one seed per module or pot, just sow a few extras in case. Beans don't tolerate frost. Plant them outside only when you're sure there's no chance of a late frost. Harden seedlings off a week beforehand by leaving them outside for a few hours longer each day. A shaded cold frame is great for acclimatising plants. Space bush beans at the same distances as if sowing. Carefully ease them from their cells or pots, then lay them out where they are to be planted. Use a trowel to dig a hole, drop the plant into place, then fill in around it and firm into position. Try planting beans alongside earlier crops left to flower. The flowers of radishes, cilantro or coriander, and arugula or rocket will both confuse pests such as aphids and attract predators like lacewings and hoverflies. Plant pole beans at least 6 inches or 15 centimetres apart in rows around 2 feet or 60 centimetres apart. The traditional way to grow beans is against parallel rows of bamboo canes joined where they cross the top to a horizontal cane. Or try a bean frame like this. Instead of leaning into each other, the canes lean out and are secured to a rectangular frame at the top. It's a simple take on the usual ridge supported setup and by having the canes leaning away from the centre like this, the beans hang free so they're a lot easier to pick. But it's bean teepees that are arguably the prettier support option. Take the opportunity to create a centrepiece to your garden, a vertical leafy accent brimming with blooms and beans. Seedlings may sometimes need a little encouragement onto their supports, but they'll quickly find their own way up. Bush types rarely need any supporting, though top-heavy plants laden with beans will appreciate short canes, twigs or pea sticks to keep them off the ground. 
Keep your beans well watered in dry weather, especially when they begin to flower. Mulching around the base of plants helps to keep the ground moist for longer, and it gives weeds a tougher time. Any weeds that do peek through should be removed by hand to avoid disturbing the beans. Pinch out the tops of pole beans once they've reached the top of their supports. This stops them becoming an ungainly tangled mass and it concentrates the plant's efforts into producing more flowers and beans. Once your beans are ready, it's essential to remember the three P's, pick, pick and pick some more. When they're in full flow, beans are almost unstoppable, but only if those precious pods are picked as they appear. Stop picking and the production will grind to a halt. Pick pods while they're still relatively young and slender. At this point they'll be nice and tender, but leave them too long and they'll turn stringy and tough. Towards the end of the season, it's worth leaving a few pods of open pollinated or heirloom varieties to dry out on the plant. Shell the dried pods, then bring the beans inside to dry further in an airy location. Store the beans in paper envelopes labelled with the variety and date, then use them for next year's crop. Who doesn't love the taste of homegrown beans? Lightly steamed with a grind of pepper, perhaps with a decadent curl of butter to liven it all up is by far the best way to enjoy them. How do you grow your beans? As always, join in the conversation below and let us have your tips for cultivating this most generous of crops. And click that subscribe button too, so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. Our subscribers are a generous sharing bunch and we'd love you to join us. I'll catch you next time.